there's a gap in my blinds and I keep thinking, when I open my eyes, I'll see him staring back at me through the gap. Oh, hi, it's David Farrier speaking. I'm a journalist based in Auckland. How are you doing? No, I'm correct. Thank you. Bye. A full-scale war was breaking out on the streets of an Auckland suburb. A wheel clamper who was then demanding they pay to get their vehicles back. You are a crook. I'm literally trying to give you 400 bucks cash. Uncontrolled, exorbitant, intimidating behaviour. You are an absolute crook. You are a liar. I know there must be more to this car park terrorist, and I want to find out what. People won't talk because they're frightened. He's a very dangerous man. That's his trademark, soften them up, poison them off, and then shoot them down in flames. That's not a good thing to be probing into with our family. It's caused a lot of pain. This man was dangerous. How did you know that he had been to my house? He just talked all about you and said that he's on to you. They give me a key to your home. That does seem Brilliant. quite weird. I mean, I'd prefer you didn't have a key to my house. Holy oh, oh, shit. Yeah. This is fucking crazy. He knows I'm making a film about him, and I think he wants to be a part of it. He followed me down to my bedroom, and he punched me in the head six times. Michael Organ is a black hole. You kind of get taken along for the ride. And I've fallen in. <gasps> well, he is a genius. I'm literally trapped with him. But the problem with Michael is once he gets on to you, he won't let go. You probably would have been quite an interesting person to know if you weren't such a cut. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. And welcome back, ladies and gents. So, yeah, this is uh, another one of those Listener Choice December episodes, and we like to keep it real here. We do this, um, I want to say this is like the fourth year we've done this now, where we pick, um, you know, your dream Christmas horror movie. We pick your movie for Baz to watch. We, we, we have fun with those. But then we also pick something which is very much against the tide, but more in keeping with the tone of the show, where we give you the power to pick um, a true crime documentary of some description for myself to cover. And historically speaking, and keeping with tradition, at this time of year it's important, I uh, bring one man back to talk with me. I'm sure he's overjoyed that he always gets brought back on to talk about these sorts of things in December. But joining me on the show to discuss Mr. Organ from 2022 is uh, my good buddy, Darren Wilson. How's it going, Darren? It's doing fabulously, uh, or it's going <laughs> fabulously, I guess I should say. Uh, how about yourself, sir? I am well. I'm well. I've just spent um, about an hour and a half uh, chatting about the equally cheery movie Possession from 1981. So um, <laughs> I, like, I've just come out of an experience talking about a movie that kind of really just got under my brain and just played around uh, like an amateur lobotomist. Um, and yeah, we're now getting to talk about a movie uh, <laughs> which also like managed to occupy a little bit of my brain when it finished last night. I am... Um, I had some weird dreams last night. I don't dream often, but I had weird dreams less about Possession, which I watched right after this, and more about this movie. Um, I found my brain like, like very much like the documentary filmmaker, kind of spinning constantly trying to work out exactly what the end game is um, of this one. Uh, and we're going to get into that, but yeah, like we are, I keep bringing you back for these. I'm assuming that you're enjoying doing them, otherwise you would have told me to fuck off. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> It's always a pleasure talking with you about any number of topics. I think possibly the last time we talked on mic was last time we did this. 
that could be right. That's a depressing thought. Um, if that is the case, uh, we will need to make sure that we don't have to wait so long again to do these. Um, you're easy to record with them, and you're also someone that I find has interesting points as opposed to just talks. Um, and I, <laughs> I, I like those sorts of people on my show. Uh, yeah, last year, what did we do last year? Can you remember? Last year, wasn't last year uh, the... Um... The wasn't Grim Dear Sleeper, Zachary, was it? <laughs> I think it was Dear Zachary and the Grim Sleeper. Oh fucking hell! We've definitely done both of them, but I thought it was uh, boom boom. It could very well be. It could have been a double. It seems like something I would have recklessly planned last year. Um, <laughs> not this year. Not this year. We, we're swinging into a one and done. Um, and I'm kind of excited about this one because I feel like we've went full circle. I feel like the first one we did was on tickled was and yeah I think and it was me because i campaigned so <laughs> so hard for it yeah you got you got dragged in and now look what happened are you happy look at what you've done um so we're back to discuss the essentially new documentary by um david ferrier the new zealand documentarian and journalist and you know what like in the interim, he did um, he did Dark Tourist, which is a great Netflix series if you've never seen it. Uh, I believe he's been described as, and I think it's a really apt description, as the New Zealand uh, Louis Theroux. Um, he has that kind of look and the way he even interviews and speaks to people very much like that, except he's the New Zealand version, so he's slightly more crass. Um, <laughs> you know what you did, New Zealand. Um so, but I had been wondering, after Dark Tourist, he hadn't done anything. And that show was a ton of fun, and I always thought we were going to get, like, a season two, but Netflix, <laughs> you don't get a season two at Netflix. Um, but he hadn't done anything in a while, so, and I wasn't, this wasn't even on my radar, that when, um, I think it was Robert Ward and the group uh, had put this one forward and said, you know, it'd be an interesting what to do, it's done by David Ferrier, maybe you guys did Tickled. And I was like, oh yeah, he, like, I wonder how many movies of his I've missed in the last couple of years. Hasn't done anything. And I thought that was strange until I started watching the movie. And then I realised why I hadn't done anything in a couple of years. Um, this project that we're going to talk about has basically taken him six years to complete. Which is nuts. <laughs> like for what it is. You know what yeah, I mean? It's not it's... six years because he was studying like Vietnamese war crimes during, you know, like like, like during the invasion of Nam Pang or something like that. He was, this is literally a, I am making a documentary on one guy. It's like, yeah. Oh God. Uh, and and it's, it's why he woke up in the night crying <laughs> and it's, <laughs> It's it's in it's in <laughs> you know me. Yep. I try not to always bring everything <laughs> towards this towards certain uh areas of of conversation but it it was so interesting, you know, as an American, I mm. have no really point of reference for vindictive sociopaths narcissists who think everyone's out to get them and just talk forever about nothing I, well I, i'm gonna say in an alternate world where uh, mr organ um lived in america he would be a president <laughs> yeah or at least in congress <laughs> at least in congress at least in congress spending hours talking about and doing nothing um we yeah. do have that one uh in in new york who was <laughs> The champion won the championship volleyball game at yep. a school he never went to. Yeah, and, oh, that's uh, the, yeah, that's the least of his lies. It's <laughs> now been, yeah. like, that's, that's probably the most believable of all his lies and that's yeah. borne out. And he is still, let me just make sure I've got this right, still a congressman? Still a congressman. <laughs> uh, the House Ethics Committee found that he committed massive amounts of fraud, <laughs> including using uh, donors credit cards for only fans purchases still, still a congressman. congressman still a congressman yep. that's cool he yep. probably won't run for re-election that's <laughs> uh that's where it is finish his term that's how dedicated yeah. he is to the job there and these people 
uh, that he's representing. Yeah, he'll finish out that term. He will not be pushed out of office. My guy. And he'll retire and help run a uh, antique store in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. So, Michael. Michael. <laughs> Michael. Um, so let's uh, let's give a little bit of detail about this one. So this one has actually just properly been released um, in the last couple of weeks. You were telling me. Yeah, in the U.S., it became available uh, streaming-wise yep. on the 21st of November. Perfect. So you can go out and check it out. It's available via Mubi in the U.K., uh, so you can go and check it out there. They were part funders of this. All this one has a multitude of people that are um, kind of pitching in the finances to make it. Um, the movie itself uh, is a documentary of about an hour and a half in length, and the I, I mean it's real people so we can't go into too much of the deets about people that are in it suffice to say it follows david ferrier the filmmaker and journalist as he um starts to peel back the 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 skin of an onion uh, to realize that, that I, I was about to do the ogres are onions thing from shrek and i'm going to stop myself <laughs> because i realized that there's a uh, cultural appropriation in the 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 accent that uh, a certain actor did when they did that and i'm not having it um <laughs> the synopsis and i suppose it's best to start there and then we'll get into it is journalist david ferrier who did tickled is drawn into a game of cat and mouse with a mysterious individual delving deeper he unearths a trail of court cases of royal bloodlines and ruined lives and this true story of psychological warfare um to give a a loose kind of timeline of this and then we'll kind of delve into a little bit more about how we feel about the documentary um it starts off with him as a journalist which he is by trade uh coming across um what appears to be illegal sorry legal but to me felt very illegal uh racketeering sort of extortion scam that people parked in a certain car park outside a certain antique store in auckland after its opening hours, that a private company would clamp the car and then charge you an extortionate fee to unclamp it. And he took this, wrote some articles about it, was essentially given a cease and desist letter from an attorney who went by the name MD Organ. And when he did a little bit of investigation into it, he realised that no such lawyer existed, but that there had been a Michael Organ mentioned in a news article who claimed to be a prince. Um, and when he looked at that guy's picture and the guy who was clamping, he thought, they look awfully alike, and decided to do an investigation into Michael Organ, which then unravels a very litigious string of events that Ferrier himself then decides to make a documentary of essentially interviewing for huge portions of time Michael Organ himself, but predominantly the people that have the, the, the litter of bodies that are left in the wake of people that either lived with this guy, knew this guy, or interacted with this guy, or wronged this guy in one way, shape, or form over a period of about 30 years. And... It's Ferrier, I think, trying to at first understand and being convinced that he can break Michael Organ into telling him a detail that will allow him to expose him as a liar. Um, and then realising towards the end of this movie that that will never happen because he has already done that in plain sight and that's probably the easiest way i can describe it the thing i would say beforehand to you Derm, is this is an experienced documentary um and that i was about 15 minutes into it last night and then i hit stop and i messaged my wife and was like if i put this back to the beginning will you watch this with me because my like you have to fucking see this and she was like <laughs> okay then so I then put it back to the beginning and me and my wife watched it and we both sat kind of slack-jawed right to the very end. Um, how did you get on with this one? 
Yeah, I I watched it by myself uh, because <laughs> my wife was like, I gave a brief description. I was also, I was probably about 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in. Mm-hmm. And uh, she similarly said, I've had enough of people like that for a while. <laughs> and uh, it's like, thanks, but no thanks. And uh, so I watched it by myself. Yes. And it was, yeah, it, it, like if it was, if. Uh, if Tickled and Mr. Organ were works of fiction, it might have been a poor follow up. Mm. But s- because of like the peak of Tickled is not as glamorous yes. as as uh, the the subject matter in Mr. Organ or Mr. Yeah. Organ. Organ. Um, Mr. Organ. Now, Michael. <laughs> You're not being fair. Um, it, but it's that reality. It's like, uh, you know, we've got a lot of horror fans listening. It's why like home invasion movies fuck with me so much. Mm. Cause like this guy or versions of this guy are running homeowners associations oh, yeah. around the country they are, like we said, running for office, holding office. They are, they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. I think the the perception from some people, are, and more moreover, what surprised me more about Ferrier's approach to this is how remarkable he found this guy, and how unremarkable I found this guy, because people like this exist everywhere. Like, yeah. it's just um, maybe in New Zealand maybe to the extremes that this guy exists and for how long he has been doing what he's doing there's obviously a lot more people that are around to talk about it but yeah, the, the, the term fake it until you make it <laughs> exists for a reason you know what I mean and that's kind of this guy here he is unwilling to to admit that he is wrong. He is unwilling to admit that he has lied. He's unwilling to admit that he has broken the law. And his name is not Donald Trump. I, I, like, I don't... I, I can't... I get the feeling... I think the thing is, as well, though, is I think there's a part of Ferrier who... I can't believe, as intelligent a man as this is, that he didn't twig... Kind of like the same way when you ever watched that Catfish documentary... The, like the original oh, one. Oh, yeah. There's a part in that where I'm like that, right, they knew, right, and then they were like, this is too good to not... Because they're filming right at the beginning, which doesn't make any sense. Like, they're filming, oh, this girl sent me a picture, let's film it. Um, you know what I mean? And, and this one here, I get the feeling that during the six years that this was going on, at some point earlier, Ferrier put it all together. Um, he even says as much in here that he just, he talks, he says a lot, but doesn't say a lot. Um, and, you know, I, I, but I'm going to keep interacting with him. And the bit that he breaks them in here where he's like, have I wasted like three years of my life? Um, am I ever going to get resolution in this one? Am I ever going to get closure? Is this like a bust? Is this like going to turn out to be something that's salvageable as a movie or is this guy just like a pathological liar um, and exists in that world so rigorously that he himself doesn't know he's lying which is the hard scenario when the person that is constantly lying doesn't know they're lying there's no victory there like you're never going to be able to be like that aha so you lied um the guy exists very carefully measured in everything he says at all times. Um, as a result, you, you don't get anything from him. And he's very quick when you do make a point to essentially talk over you to the point that you kind of give up. And that's the the saving grace for this movie. I read some of the, the, the kind of critiques and reviews of it because I was infinitely fascinated by the end of it. And a lot of people felt that it starts off with a really strong premise but by the end of it, it kind of loses sight of what that premise is. And as a result, it doesn't give you a defined, like, robust resolution. And I would argue against that. I actually think it 
does give you a very strong, robust resolution. And that resolution is people like this exist. They will never change. You'll never win against them in terms of... You might lock them up, but they'll never admit that what they've done is wrong um, because they can't see in their own mind's eye or their own brain that anything they have done is ever wrong. So what is what is the victory that you're trying to achieve here? If it's culpability, you're never going to get that, which is what Ferrier is ultimately trying to do, and that's a failed mission from the start, and it's only when you get the kind of the usual suspects ending here where he starts piecing together <laughs> goddamn Kobayashi when, when he starts piecing together all the conversations that he has with him that he comes to the conclusion that he's fully aware of everything he's doing in fact not only is he fully aware of that but every every interaction with him where he's seeing those things is fr- in front of his current victim and that's the harrowing That's the disturbing part of the documentary, is he has this woman basically worshipping the ground that he walks on, and in front of her is saying, I think we know who this person is. I think you know who this person is. And it's right in front of her, and it's always kind of playful with a wink. And when you play back all those segments back to back, and you realise that he's ultimately talking about himself, um, it's like, I know that, and you know that, that I'm taking advantage of this woman and I'm a bad guy but like you don't you won't know now or there's nothing you can say that will help you and that's extremely sinister (laughs) (laughs) I mean that's 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 without going back to Trump again but that's Trump saying I could punch a baby on Fifth Avenue and still get elected president yeah yeah I mean uh, the stakes there's real stakes yes so I found that Infinitely fascinating. I think... I think Ferrier plays it up a little bit, but that's kind of his job in some respects. He's not a... He's not a documentary filmmaker who is completely unbiased or impartial. You know what I mean? (laughs) More Michael Moore than David Attenborough. A hundred percent. And the fact that he was taken to court and lost (laughs) against this guy, I think probably informs a lot of or it certainly colours a lot of what comes afterwards. I I think it would be very difficult for him to say, oh this person that sued me and won a sum of money, uh, which sounded quite substantial, although I don't know what the the exchange rate from either US dollars to New Zealand dollars or Great British Prims to, to New Zealand dollars equates to but it sounded like it was a costly experience for him and it also kind of sounds like after that it gets a bit personal (laughs) so (laughs) I mean at that point you know it kind of feels like you have to kind of take a step back and understand that he he, like first and foremost he's a journalist before he's a documentary filmmaker he just so happens to have made documentaries and that will always be journalists have a bias so it's it's in there but um, let me ask you this keep conversation going all right of all the things that michael organ did what was the what was his worst crime do you think or do you think they're all actually equally the same crime it's just the effect it had on people varied you know i did spend a little bit of time thinking about that and i actually did look up earlier uh the Australian dollar to US dollar, <laughs> US dollar to, to UK. Uh, so to, while that's fresh in my mind before it dis- dis- disappears yeah. into wherever else, uh, the Australian dollar is about 60% of a US dollar. All right. And a US dollar is like 78 to 80% of a uh, UK pound. Yeah. So it's still thousands. So he still paid yeah. thousands. <laughs> oh, he still paid thousands by himself. I don't remember how many people uh, missed <laughs> Count Organ or whatever he was calling himself when he was clamping cars. Yeah. Uh, hundreds of people. Hundreds of people to potentially the tune of at a minimum $400. 
Yeah, because he he really struggled with that point. It was like, David, it was seven hundred dollars for two caps. Well, that's that's how you know the guy's a dick, right? Because he's yeah. like he keeps saying, "I never clamped him. I I never clamped. I never charged anyone for uh, that amount of money for clamping them." And he's like, "That I physically have you on camera saying that." And this is in their last interaction. It's like I physically have you on camera saying that, and he's like, "No, no, no, no. That was for two clamps." <laughs> Uh, so and I'm I'm and, hearing that go that decade, like <laughs> he's just like yeah. fucking hate this guy. Uh, if we're talking because he's very very uh, he's very litigious yes. or very uh, into the idea of what you can prove in court. Mm -hmm. I would say the alleged elder abuse mm. might be the worst crime, but since none of that is actually shown, yeah, other than his controllingness. Yeah, it could be the the extortion. Yeah, um, that's that's where I would go. See, like I was uh, thinking, like because it's ultimately the same playbook every time, right? So he's yeah. deploying the same crime. It's the effects are based on the person that he's doing it to. So it's a slightly tailorized version, but it's always the same playbook. It's always the same con, right? But that con can have. I think this is the point of the movie in some respects to do with the character. Depending on who he targets it against, there is a wildly different um, outcome. Uh, this outcome manifests itself probably at its darkest with um, a person who commits suicide uh, right, because... The, the and this is, this is dark as fuck. He accuses... The guy, the guy puts up a, um, a model boat model yacht in his uh in his bookstore and michael organ like basically reports him to the police and gets legal with it um that he has stolen this this kind of model yacht and this guy who's ill-equipped already um to, to handle anything on this level of of kind of scrutiny and legal it seems like he was a very shy timid person and um, ultimately kills himself right <laughs> um yeah. to the point that at his funeral during the eulogy People are basically, without naming Organ, they are basically saying it's Organ's fault. But he ultimately did this through purely <laughs> some sort of horrible narcissistic spite because he was arrested and did time for stealing a yacht, which he claims he didn't do. <laughs> and that, that level of cunning, calculated, cold, targeted malicious intent is is beyond what my brain can think of like I've thought when someone's wronged me on, a, on an occasion I've thought I'm going to get vengeance and I've thought about the best way to get vengeance and it's like it's not great you know the shit in a bag and leave it outside the front door is maybe about as far as my vengeance gets but he goes all in with this kind of multi-pronged what ultimately appears to be a very simple attack, but just knows that this guy's psyche won't be able to handle it, um, and goes full on in it, and that's terrifying. And, like, the string of people that they interview that are all ultimately in the same position, where they either lived with them, or knew him, or got on the wrong side of him, and he is so laser-focused on what he needs to do to those people, it's... You know, they're all not like not one of them came away saying it had been a great experience. Now, once again, that could be because David Ferrier didn't interview everyone and only used the people that had negative things to say. Just seems like there was a lot of negative things about the guy. So, um, it, it, it kind of surprised me um, on the level. I also think, as well, it's a very simple documentary for the most part. It's like you mentioned about like Tickled is. So bizarre, right? Because it's a subculture that we're just not used to hearing anything about, right? And as a result, it kind of, that's a thing? Oh my god, you know what I mean? Then you start, like, then you find it's this massive, like, kind of Byzantine fucking conspiracy <laughs> in the background of this one person behind it all, essentially extorting people for money through fetish tickling videos. And, and this one here... I, like I say, it's the fact that I know that people like this exist, and there's a lot of people that exist like this, 
that I kind of felt like it felt a lot more ordinary and pedestrian, but infinitely more darker. Like, just from the, the like, like, you heard about the people who had been exploited for the tickling thing, and it sounded like, it sounded like the, their lives had been, you know, severely hampered, if not kind of destroyed in one way, shape, or form. But they were getting on with their lives. And then you see the, some of these people were fidgety, twidgety, you know, like they like couldn't really make eye contact, didn't want their name at all mentioned for fear of, like, you know, retaliation. And testing just, to see if it's actually David Ferrier oh or man. Michael Oregon. Like that right at the beginning. That was the point where I hit pause and was like to my wife, I was like, we need to, we need to watch this together. It's just a lot of that. It's I found that like inherently fascinating as a documentary. It's a weird little. It's, I'd like you mentioned that like, we'll probably like swing around in a minute to talk about this as kind of like a closing to. So I don't want to give too much away about what fully happens in this because it's just come out. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to watch this and like I say, not think that Ferrier knew earlier on what he had. Right, there's another part of me that thinks that everyone said that when you're in his sphere of interest, you lose the ability to think rationally, and he's either like taking some acting lessons and become very good as an actor, or like I could see it in his face, he looked worn out making this. Like he looked worn out after speaking to the guy, after being on the phone with him. Um, it's I don't know I like it, it's a I don't think it's as glamorous a topic as his previous documentary, but I found it. Like, I was thinking about it for hours afterwards and most of last night. Yeah, so. I mean I've uh, it's it's stuck with me longer uh, after initial watch than I think tickled did. Oh yeah, tickled was like a kind of that's a, that's a, I can't wait to talk to someone about that documentary that I watched. I don't even know where I would start on Mr. Organ if I was trying to tell it to someone. <laughs> oh, so he lies yeah. to people. Yeah, oh, that seems like a riveting documentary. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's the way he lies. Um, it's, yeah, it was just... Right, let, 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 let's, let, let, let's, do a, let's do the good old-fashioned comparison then. Do you think that this is a better documentary than Tickled, or do you think uh, Tickled is a better documentary? What do you think? Ooh. I would just put them next to each other in different categories. I would do the same. I'm glad that you said that. I, I, I think they are both super interesting exposés on human nature. <laughs> I think. <laughs> like, and, to, and to which extent humans can corrupt, exploit, and manipulate others for profit and gain. Or for pure pleasure. Like, there's a scene in this one where Michael describes a German psychological term, which is basically, is it dark dreams or something? Um, where you derive pleasure through the systematic misery of others. Um, and while he's describing this to Michael, uh, uh, sorry, to David, he's smiling while he's saying it. Um <laughs> And I'm like, that's yeah. just not a term that you just know unless <laughs> it's either been mentioned to you before or you've went to search out, what is this thing? that It's like that, that way where you're like, oh, I'm into strangle porn. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a term. Uh, that's good to know. Um, is that sort of thing um, when, when it comes out? I, I think they're both very, very, very interesting, nice short documentaries that give you really cool character studies of the darker side of humanity. And I think that in itself is what Ferrier seems to be very fucking good at doing. So yeah, um, let's hope he recuperates and uh, gets does more. Yeah, I, I think he's a really. I like his stuff. I would like to see more of his stuff. And now that he's on the other side of this, hopefully he will do. Now he's on the other side of this in an undisclosed address. Um, I, I would like to see more of that. I would like to hear more of that. Uh, let's talk grades, Dern. Um, you know it's one through five on podcasts under the stairs. One has hated it. Two is didn't like it. Three is liked it. Four is really liked it. Five has loved it. Where are you coming in with Mr. Organ? You know, I don't know. I don't really know if I've done this. Uh, like we do talk a lot about, about a lot of good stuff, but yeah. I'm between four and a half and five. 
Yep. I really am. Like, I, I'm really tempted to give it a five because I would watch it again today. Yes. Yeah, I'm, so... I'm, I'm, I'm struggling as well. I think I'm settling in four and a half, I think, on a rewatch as a five. I think okay, it is. So... I, like, I think it, yeah. it, it hit so many sweet spots for me in terms of just just the twists and turns that I think I've not done the rewatch yet I'd be interested on a rewatch if I pick up more stuff and more of the conversations earlier on in their interactions that made me go oh, oh right sure. aye, that totally makes sense you know once again the usual suspects thing where you watch that movie the second time you're like <laughs> oh my god it all makes sense you know so <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that I'm kind of thinking that um, Dern you're a busy guy you do podcasts and stuff where can people check out your stuff uh, look up psycho semantic one word uh pretty much everywhere uh i i do have another side pro technically i have uh a show called the vd clinic mm -hmm. pod also uh, that i am the d of that part but uh i nothing's in in the future yet yep. but vanessa this is the first time this was exclusive here. Oh, she is talking about ending her social media break. Oh, so we'll see. We'll see what comes of that. But we've started chatting again. Uh, nice. So all the people that have asked me how she's been, how she's doing. I've actually talked with her recently and she's doing well. She's very happy to be off the Internet right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man, to be off the Internet, honestly, one day. One day. Yeah. Right? But <sighs> psychosemantic for all your other uh Darren needs. But maybe you'll see Duncan this year. Uh oh. we've we've been tossing some ideas around. It's yeah, been a minute you like, let's have, let's but... like you leave it in my hands, it'll never happen, Darren. You just like you just take control of this situation. You book it in and then oh. I will be there. I will get on you. <laughs> we'll get on, then we'll get on each other. <laughs> Sounds like my sort of party. Um, Dan, thank you very much for joining me.